Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacklit Educational Channel. So this is the ARS Net Environmental Science video part 5 and here we are going to discuss about the important agricultural topics related to the ARS Net syllabus. Yes, this will be point wise and you can note down all these notes because these are going to be very helpful in the examination. So without much delay, let's get started. So here as you can see the environmental science ARS net syllabus and here two topics we are going to discuss today. One will be plant introduction, another will be crop domestication. So these are very important. So we'll start with the plant introduction part. So here first of all we should know the definition or the meaning of the plant introduction. So this is very simple. Introducing plant variety in a new place is called as the plant introduction with the help of plant genes or germplasm. So a plant variety ko ek jage se dusre jaga introduce karne ko hum kahenge plant introduction. So I think it is clear now very simple introducing plants to a new place new area will be called as plant introduction. But why we should introduce a plant in the new place? The objectives are as follows. First of all to introduce high yielding varieties of the plants or crops to increase the food production. For example rice and wheat. So some of the rice and wheat varieties are very very high yielding. They produce more than the normal varieties. So what do we do? We introduce those crops ko ek se dusre ko introduce karte hai to get more amount of food production. The second objectives of the plant introduction is to enrich the germplasm collection. So this germplasm everything we have discussed in the last video and you should know that to increase the genetic resources germplasm collection we introduce this plant introduction method. Third point is to get new sources of resistance against both biotic and abiotic stresses. So this is a very important point that if we introduce new plant for example if any plant is resistance against any pest then we should introduce them into new places. For example agar koi cotton crop mein resistance hai against any insect then hum usko introduce karte hain nai jagah par taaki hume insect resistance crop mil jaye jo ki cotton ka otherwise if there is any plant resistance to against Abiotic factor for example any rice variety is resistant to water logging for example where there is more rainfall there are certain rice varieties they are not able to withstand that condition but there are certain crops which are resistant to the high rainfall so we have to introduce them in order to get the resistant crop variety. Similarly to introduce new plant species we create or we build up new industries for example oil palm industry yes when we came to know that the palm oil is also very beneficial and it can be grown in our environment then we introduced into every environment which is suitable for the palm oil and as a result our industries also grew so these are the objectives of plant introduction but now we will know what are the types of plant introduction so kis tarah hum plant ko introduce kar sakte hai? so first is based on the adaptation introductions are of two types yes plants ke adaptive characters ko lekar do tarah ke introduction hai primary introduction and secondary introduction so iske baare mein hum padhenge in the slides mein next is based on the utilization again the introduction of plants are of two types that is direct introduction and indirect introduction so you should note down these things now we will know one by one about primary and secondary introduction types so starting with the primary introduction so this type of introduction is done when the introduction variety is well suited to a new environment. So for example there is a rice variety in Germany and we want to introduce in our country that is India. So what we will do we will simply as per the primary introduction we will simply release the plants for the commercial cultivation without any alteration of genotype. So we no need to change the genes in the body of that rice plant because it should be well suited to new environment. So with all the scientific experiments we came to know that it is well suited to the environment of India. So no need to alter the genotype the genes of the rice variety. So simply we will directly introduce in the market and the farmers will grow this type of rice. So what are these primary introduced varieties? So for example dwarf wheat varieties like Sonora 64 and Lerma Rojo. Dwarf rice varieties like Taichung native one 
and IR8. So IR8 is important. You should note down. Primarily introduced crop of rice dwarf variety is IR8. Similarly, what is secondary introduction? So it is also very simple thing to know. Secondary introduction, the introduced variety is subjected to selection or used in hybridization program with local varieties. Yes, it is not suited for the new environment. So, ये जो नए environment में वो crop grow नहीं कर पाएगा सही तरीके से, वो adapt नहीं कर पाएगा. For that reason, what we do? We used to hybridize the plant with the local variety of crop and then after improving the variety we will introduce into the market so in this secondary introduction what happens is first we have to make it suitable for the new environment but here it was well suited to the new environment so in order to make it suitable for the new environment new place we have to use hybridization technique we have to multiply their population by breeding with the local varieties so as to become suited for the new environment so here hybridization technique kiya jata hai local varieties ke saath to get the improved varieties with some new characters so examples of second introduction are the kalyan sona and sonalika variety of wheat which is introduced from the mexico variety so now coming to the next slide we will know what are the steps in the plant introduction it is also important we should know what are the steps in the plant introduction procedure number one is procurement of the germplasm so the germplasm that is the genes of the plant variety which we want to introduce we have to procure them we have to collect them from the other part of the world or other part of the country next is quarantine so quarantine not the new word you most of you will be knowing due to covid so what in quarantine we used to do we used to stay in certain place for some days then we are coming out of that so similarly in this case also same thing is done the new germplasm or the new crop which is taken from the different country is kept in quarantine for some days in order to check whether it is good for our environment or not whether it is not bad for our local variety so when this quarantine time is over then the third process is cataloging so cataloging means we have to give certain name certain tags to the new variety of the crops which we are going to introduce in our country the fourth step is evaluation so we have to evaluate that crop under different environmental condition that is we have to alter the temperature we have to alter the water so these things you have to check under different environments whether that crop is suitable or not and finally hum kya karenge multiplication and distribution of that new plant variety so we have to multiply that plant by breeding techniques and then distribute to the farmers and other distributors of seeds and other varieties to in order to increase the production of this plant species so these are five steps procurement of germplasm quarantine cataloging evaluation and multiplication and distribution next moving on what are the merits and demerits of plant introduction yes everything is having the advantage and disadvantage similarly plant introduction ka bhi merits hai and demerits hai so what are the merits we will know first is it provides entirely new crop plants to a place so a place is getting a new plant crop varieties so it is a good thing that we will get a new thing to encourage second is superior varieties may be originated directly or after selection or hybridization superior varieties mean best quality best variety of crop we can get after selection either by hybridization or directly third is germplasm collection so we will get more genetic pool variants and we have to maintain them and the genetic variability will be protected as the gene pool will increased similarly the next point is the plant introduction is the most quick and economical method of crop improvement so in this way we also improve the crop when introduced material can be used directly so this is case of the primary introduction next the final merit of this plant introduction is introduction of some varieties of newer areas may protect them from some disease yes for example if any crop is very good at yield but in other countries they are having the problem of some disease then if we are taking them to our country as a plant introduction then they may be protected from those disease and they can thrive better and they can grow more easily without any attack from the diseases as compared to their original place so now coming to the demerits of the plant introduction 
तो फर्स्ट थिंग इज द वीड्स लाइक एर्जिमॉन एक्ोर्निया लेंटना हैव बीन इंट्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम अदर कंट्रीज सो वॉट आर दिस दे आर इन्वेसिव स्पीसीज सो दे आर वेरी डेंजरस इन आवर कंट्रीज एंड दे आर वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रिमूव बिकॉज दे वे आर इंट्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम द अदर कंट्रीज एंड दे आर नाउ कंपीटिंग विथ आर लोकल क्रॉप एंड प्लांट वेराइटीज सो दिज आर वेरी वेरी हार्मफुल एज दे हैव टर्न टू वीड्स एंड दे आर इन्वेसिव इन नेचर नेक्स्ट इज द फंगल डिजीजेज लाइक लेट ब्लाइट ऑफ पटैटो फ्लैट स्मट ऑफ व्हीट कॉफी रस्ट Bunchy top of banana have been introduced in India along with plant materials. Yes, when these plants were taken from other countries without quarantine, without evaluating them, when they were introduced, they resulted in the upgrowing of the fungal diseases like late blight of potato, flat smut of wheat, coffee rust, bunchy top of banana because they were introduced without any proper introduction procedure. Next is many insects pests like potato tuber moth. Woolly apis of apple were introduced in India, so the pest also came along with the crops. For example, potato tuber moth came, woolly apis of apple came because of the not proper introduction. As a result, India is facing a very vital fight against these kinds of pest. So now we will know about the crop domestication. which is also called as gramian what is domestication we all know what are domestic animals so domestic animals are those animals which we keep in our houses in our farms in order to use them in order for human use we use the domestic animals similarly domestic crops are those or domestication of crop is the process of adapting wild plants and animals for our human use for food for work for clothing for medicine and many other uses so when we use the wild varieties of plants for our usage by altering their genes yes by altering their genes by the process of adapting them to our environment it is called as crop domestication so i hope aapko ye term ye definition aapko pata chala hoga next is domesticated species are not wild so as they have been altered their genes are altered now they are used for the human usage so they will not be considered wild but yes they were taken from the wild varieties but now they will not be considered wild as they are domesticated species next thing is individuals that exhibit desirable traits are selected to be bred yes hame agar kisi trait ko select karna hai which we desire for example if we want to introduce so it is kind of introduction but it is domestication for human usage by altering their genes they are called as the crop domestication process for example if any plant is having more sweetness in a fruit then what we have to do we have to breed with the fruit variety which is having less sweeter which is found in the crops so from wild variety we have to breed with the local varieties and then we have to pass along to future generation to meet our human needs i hope you understood let's move to the next slide and no more important points about this plant domestication so plant is said to be domesticated when its native characteristics are altered such that it cannot grow and reproduce without human intervention yes any crop any plant agar hum kisi ko wild variety se lekar aakar domestication karte hain that plant characteristics are altered so genes are altered either manually or if they are again coming back to the human uses they will automatically change their gene as the form of adaptation and as a result they cannot grow or reproduce without the human intervention so human must intervene in those kind of crops that are domesticated crops in order for their growth and reproduction and the most important point you should note down is that domestication is thought to be the result of the development of a symbiotic relationship between the plants and humans yes it is also a process of coevolution because plants and human behaviors evolve to suit one another so if we humans are taking the wild varieties and domesticating the crop varieties then the crop will also develop its adaptation and it will be called as symbiotic relationship so it is a very important point kindly note down domestication is also an example of coevolution between plants and humans now coming to the types of domestication so what are the types hum janenge there are three important types of domestication incidental directed and agriculture so incidental means 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल द ह्यूमन डिडेंट इंसिडेंटली और दे अनपर्पोज दे डोंट डू दिस डोमेस्टिकेशन इट इज़ हैपनिंग इंसिडेंटली फॉर एग्जाम्पल एनी हंटर और एनी हंटर गैदर if he or she drop the seeds in some parts then it will develop the plants in that part and it will be domesticated later on and the next thing is if it scared of natural herbivores if the hunter or hunter gatherer it is able to remove the herbivores from any part then unintentionally what the ban is doing the what the hunter is doing it is giving natural environments of the plants to grow more and more as a result the plant population or the crop population increases as the herbivores are now scared of or removed by the hunter so it is incidental type of domestication in which the plant grows next type of domestication is directed kind of domestication so what is this when humans and plants become dependent on each other how so if the plants has benefited the human to get healthier for example some plant is helping to remove the diabetic disease then what the humans will do humans will plant more and more as a result plant will also improve so this is the interconnection when the plants and humans become de dependent on each other so how we have discussed if the plant is giving more benefit to the people and it is helping it to get them healthier then people will also plant more and more that kind of crops so this is directed kind of domestication when the direction the humans are getting that yes we are getting healthier then they will plant more and more as a result it will be domesticated more next point is the agriculture type of domestication so human intervention in the crop husbandry cultivation selection so in agriculture when we are using the wild varieties in order to gain more yields it is called as domestication that is agriculture type of domestication now we will know one more important term that is super domestication yes domestication we know without the alteration or involvement of the humans the plant cannot grow and they cannot reproduce so here what is super domestication so this process is leading to a domesticated species which dramatically increase yield that could not be selected in natural environments without new technologies so here with the help of engineering technique and new technologies the increase of yield will be domesticated will be possible other than that only the plant itself cannot give the yield increase yield or the human intervention alone so new technologies or engineering technology when they are incorporated it gives rise to the super domestication process for example flavor saver tomato with delayed ripening gene action hybrid rice can be considered as a super domesticated crop conversion of a crop from c3 to c4 type of photosynthetic crop is also a kind of super domesticated type so if it is clear i will repeat again that super domestication means including or inclusion of new technologies to get the dramatically increase yield of the crop in the natural environment is called as super domestication examples are also important flavor saver tomato which is having the delayed ripening gene action hybrid rice and if you are converting a crop from its c3 nature to c4 nature of photosynthesis it is also called as super domestication process so this c3 c4 also it is very important as the cycle i will provide the link in the description which you can go through and guys i have provided the playlist of the ars net along with the revision yes the revision videos are very important kindly go through them before the examination so i hope you enjoyed this don't forget to like share and subscribe the channel to get all further updates